Hi, this is Roseanne sitting in for James on his podcast. I'm an enrollment and client journey coach with Project 90, which is one of the several programs we offer people to help them change their relationship to alcohol. I believe I have absolutely one of the best jobs in the world because I get to witness so many people transform their lives inside 90 days simply by putting alcohol to the side and seeing what happens. Today, I'd like to introduce you to one of those people that I watched transform. He's going to talk about a phrase that he coined inside of Project 90 called the domino effect. We have with us Danny Ceballos, who is 57 year old, years old from the Bay Area in California. Danny is an entrepreneur, executive coach, and leadership strategist with Unleashed Consultant Consulting. Welcome, Danny. Great. Thanks, Rosanna. I appreciate the <laughs> invitation. Delighted to be here. Oh, we're happy to have you. Hey, how many days alcohol-free are you today? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So let's see, 90 if I do the math. 137. So at about four and a half months. Ooh, congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. I want to I want to start today with um, telling people about what life was like before you decided to take this journey. What were you struggling with? What were you? What was your decision point for taking action? Yeah, so I don't know if my story is any different than a lot of other folks. So it's well, it probably is in a lot of ways. So for me, it was alcohol was not an issue until it became an issue. And then all of a sudden it would not go away. So, right. So I often, you know, as I've been going through this, I often think that there's something about, um, we can, you know, maybe talk about this in a little bit, but the idea that that first drink is the first drink doesn't lie to me. It doesn't lie to you. It says, Hey, if you drink me, you're going to have a good time and feel relaxed. The problem is the second drink that says, I'm going to be just like the first drink. And then the third drink, which is the same thing. And I found when those things started to happen, it was too late. So I was trying everything over the past three years, I think, to mitigate, to moderate, to fool myself, to gain myself, to do, and nothing stuck, nothing stuck. Um, I had also come out of a really painful divorce, um, was starting, you know, was, my business was starting to grow. It, there was all this stuff going on here, but I remember thinking back, I was actually thinking about this the other day. I was taking a walk with my dog and I was listening to some inspirational podcast. And I remember thinking at the time, because it asked me to think of the one thing that was really getting in the way of my being successful. Like the one thing that you remove that, release that. And it's like the dam will explode. And I was like, it's drinking. It's my drinking. It gets it. It robs me of a number of hours every day because I'm just lost in whatever. The next day, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes was miserable. And as I shared with you, Roseanne, in one of my first posts, how Mondays, it was great to get my Mondays back. Um, so anyway, it all, it all, it was not, it was not an abrupt thing that happened for me. It was like, wait a minute, I'm trying everything. It's not working. And I'm having the same conversation with myself that I've been having for the past three years. So that's when- Did you notice any health effects or anything like that? Yeah, so yeah, it's really funny. So I've been, I was very much trying to lose weight, to get on top of fitness stuff, a whole bunch of health stuff. and was making progress, but I could not lose. I just kept gaining these few pounds back and just never lost them. And I, so that was one thing is that, you know, once I cut 720 calories out of my day, <laughs> I continued your with this. I can, I can attest that your face is much thinner. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I lost 10 pounds in the 90 days and I'm not a big guy to begin with. So. Um, can you say that again? I didn't hear. How many, how much weight did you lose in the 90 10 pounds in the 90 days and it stayed off. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's fine, but it's significant for me because I didn't think I even had 10 pounds to lose. I thought I had just a few pounds. So that's great. And it's been done really healthy. So between that and I mean, that was kind of the, you know, the, the obvious stuff, but the, just the lack of energy it's towards the end of the evening. I mean, it's things like that that were really getting in the way of my feeling good. 
And just, again, those Mondays, man, the Mondays, I, I'm realizing now, even though I haven't drank for quite a while, Mondays still suck, right? They're still hard. I tend to not have eaten well necessarily on Sunday and don't feel great, but I feel like a billion times better and right. love much, much prefer to look at myself in the mirror now on Monday than I ever did in the past. So that was, that was huge. How about relationships? Have you noticed any difference? Oh, like what was happening in your relationships um, or was anything happening in your relationships as a result of? Well, I'll always, you know, going through a divorce was no fun. And, um, you know, to my dying day, I'll put blame on both sides of the equation. <laughs> um, and uh, as you should. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. But uh, but I. I know that that was you know, that my drinking and his my so uh, it's my ex husband so I'm a, I've been an out gay man for many many years, um, but both of us not doing well with the booze. So um, I you know I can think back of just some really horrific Technicolor arguments that would not have happened were it not for the martinis that we both became very very fond of. So in that way, you know, it certainly impacted my relationships to get to the starting point. And since then, what I've noticed, you know, we're, we're recording this during the pandemic and there hasn't, I'm not out and about a lot, um, but I have core friends and family that I continue to, can, you know, be with and associate with. And they have noticed uh, the change in my being able to be more present, more focused, um, are you, more, are you more calm by any chance? I am more calm. I am absolutely more calm. Yeah, that's something that's really interesting and kind of the, 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 the psychophysiology of it really supports what happens is our brain is rewiring, right, in a lot of ways. So, you know, we start to, first of all, we start forming new habits, new neural pathways, all that stuff. But, but the other thing is that our brain is doing some things to help us go into the more thoughtful part of ourselves. So we're able to, you know, I talk often about the, the idea of the saboteurs and the sage and the saboteurs are the negative thinking and the sage is the positive, peaceful, calmer, more thoughtful part of our minds. And I'm definitely, I can access that so much easier now. It's just, it's right there. It's right there for me to get to. And with drinking, it was always in a fog. It was a big distorted. So. I do. I do want to go to that post that you talk about, because that was just a, such a big wow for me to watch as well in your journey. So this was 12 days in <laughs> and you are looking in the mirror and you're rest, in your bathroom and going, wow, yeah. <laughs> this is the first Monday in a long time where I, I am OK with looking in the mirror. You know, tell me about what's going on then. And. Wait, that, was a that was a biggie. And I'm so glad you remember that because I keep forgetting about it. And, and it you, was so impactful. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you can share it with everybody well, else. Yeah, it was it was exactly what you said. So it was just this realization of, you know, wiping the steam off the mirror after a shower on a Monday and being like, okay, you, you know, you still look like crap, but you look like a lot better version of crap <laughs> than normally. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, significantly, and that I could focus and that I could see and it wasn't cloudy and it wasn't, I didn't feel that sense of just lethargy and, and lethargy and, 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 and tiredness and, and oh, it just it didn't feel all that. So it showed in my eyes. So I looked right into my eyes and I was like, holy shit, this is, this is working. Well, I think you mentioned that you were up earlier, that you were ready to tackle the day as yes. opposed to this mindset, like, oh my gosh, I have to make the first call. And then this, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I was missing out on, I was, I was, yeah, it was just, it was not a proud, I think there were, there were, there were client calls, there was different things that I was rescheduling on a continual basis on Mondays, because I was never able to be or I wasn't able to often wasn't able to be as present and as um as in touch as I wanted to be so that particular Monday I real first of all I had gotten up early I had you know I was working on a morning ritual for getting to bed early and getting up early and it was working um and I was able to get my day started at 9 a.m instead of 1 p.m <laughs> you know, so definitely was, an upgrade <laughs> mm -hmm, huge yeah huge so um 
you are great with coining phrases. Um, and one of the phrases that you coined and were challenging people with during your time there was recognizing the domino effect of, um, you know, what was going on during that 90 days. Tell me a little bit about what you were experiencing when you, when you found, you know, or kind of recognized that phrase. Yeah. So, the, you know, I'm a big believer in the work that I do with clients and, and, but also in my life around systems and appreciating how important systems are when we're looking at any kind of, any kind of problem that shows up over and over and over again. So this, my, my drinking was clearly a system problem, meaning that, that the one, that there were, there were a lot of things in my life that were interconnected. It wasn't just you know, whether I'm drinking or not drinking, it's that I was suffering in this part of my life or this part was frustrating and that was resulting in drinking and then the drinking would result in something else. So the domino effect says, you know, it's one thing to recognize all that and understand why we engage in habits that don't work for us. Um, but it's another thing to start realizing when they do work for us and start tracking that. So the domino effect says, you know, basically for me, what it was saying is that, that you know, what 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 happened when I stopped drinking? Well, when I stopped drinking, first of all, I saved a bunch of money, right? I totaled that up the other day, and I've saved about a thousand bucks, and that, that's one effect. <laughs> My Mondays are back; that's another effect. I lost a few pounds; that's another effect. But beyond that, what else happens? That's just the first domino. Then what happens when my health, when I feel better about myself, when I have a bit more time in my schedule and a few more bucks in my pocket? Well, I started looking around for other opportunities because I wanted to do some other things with my health and fitness. So I stumbled upon a virtual, uh, you know, hundred mile challenge, enrolled in that, felt, started doing that, found that I had more energy and the time to do that. So what happens when I did that? Well, once I did that, I started getting into other kinds of health and fitness. Like there was just this domino effect that ultimately resulted in better relationships with my family and friends better business, better business opportunities. Um, there's, I mean, I, you know, the list could, there, there are just, there are a thousand different things that happen, but they weren't necessarily, the, the, the thing with the domino effect is that it's not just the one thing that happens. It's the, the things that happen from that. And then the things that happen from that. So it's, there's, um, I love the idea of, uh, if you've ever played Jenga, the game Jenga, where you're pulling out all the different pieces yeah. and only, one, you know, you pull out this piece, nothing happens. This piece, nothing. But one or two pieces, you pull it, and the whole thing gives way. And I feel like stopping drinking was that Jenga piece for me. I pulled that out, and then a whole bunch of things came from that that I didn't anticipate. That's what's really cool about this. Like, you know, you can think about stopping drinking. You're like, okay, if I did that, then you know, this would happen. That, but there are a lot of unanticipated benefits that are the results of the dominoes falling that you don't see until you look back at them. Right. So, yeah. Now, I want to be um, pretty honest with people because not everybody, uh, this isn't always puppies and kittens and rainbows to, you know, <laughs> to get yeah. these 90 days. It's not like yeah. you enroll and it's like, well, so tell me about some of the things that weren't so easy. Yeah. For yeah. You. Yeah. So yeah, there's, you know, one of the coaches in this program or, or the main coach, his name is Kevin. And Kevin has this great expression that I never heard before about, you know, it's not all rainbows and unicorns or, or it can be all rainbows in here, but there are even dark colors in the rainbow. And I was like, oh my God, that's it. That's it. Like everything is great, but there are certainly dark colors. Um, so things like, um, you know, it's not the, you know, I, you still run into problems. You still, you know, there are you know, no matter where you go, there you are kind of thing, right? So it's not like <laughs> I've cleared up everything by not drinking, but it puts it into clearer focus. It certainly takes the edge off of a lot of things so that I can be clearer in that focus. But no, it ain't all, you know, that's, that's the one thing is that we start selling ourselves on that, you know, everything is great. And it's no, I mean, there's life still happens. There's still I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to get political, but there's still, you know, the world is shifting and changing and that's still out there. So how we react to that, um, I think changes in a great deal, you know, it's changed for me in a great, a great way. Um, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, there are still those problems out there. So there will, you know, all those things will still be there. So, um, yeah, is, is that what you're getting at? That's well, I wanted to know if there was something that you, 
a, a, if there's anything that you can think of that you could share where you really hit a bump in the road and you're yeah. like, this isn't easy, but yes. you got through it, you know? Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah, so I knew that when I reconnect, so my, my ex-husband and I are still very good friends, but um, we had, it was, you know, it was a pain in the ass to get to be friends. We finally got to be friends, but I realized a good portion of when we get together was still around drinking. So I was terrified of that, not, not terrified, but I was very worried about that, that we wouldn't be able to get through that. Um, and I found out it was, you know, that was more on me than it was on him and for me to get through it. So to kind of push through that, even if it was uncomfortable and knowing that there was something that I could lose. I mean, there are all these things that one may lose when one doesn't drink anymore, relationships, mm, dependencies, you know, uh, habits, you know, socializing habits that we had in the past. So, you know, it's, you may need to give up some of those things, but it's the trade-off is, is well worth it. So, so that was one thing was getting through that bump. That tell, me, tell me how you did make it through though. I know, I, I know because I, I walked through this with you and I remember it being very difficult, but yeah, you know, I'm sharing what helped you get through it. Yeah, I think there's this. Yes. Yeah, so to have a bit of, so to have a plan. So I had a plan when I went to visit him, this was for, he lives many, many hours away from me. So we were going to spend a couple weeks together actually. Um, and um, having a plan for what I would do in the moment was good, right? Just to have it, even though it wasn't a perfect plan. And then to be able to during while we were together to be able to turn to this community, the P90 community, um, and just get inspiration and motivation and support from uh, folks that are have already been in this place. Um, and to have, you know, a frank conversation with him about, you know, if, you know, I'm not doing this and this is the reason I'm not doing it. And it's all fine. It hasn't, you know, it's not about teetotaling and it's maybe it's not even forever, but for right now, this is important for me and my health and happiness. And um, so I think, you know, there's, there's just a lot of value in having a plan, doing some preparing and having the resources when you're in the moment to be able to turn to, should you need them. Good. Well, speaking of that, and you did make it through that trip. And then I, I think another, and I think the other, the second trip was far easier for you. Yes. Good memory. Yeah. Very good. Memory. Yeah. I love <laughs> watching everybody's journey. A lot. Um, huh? It was a lot easier, a lot easier. And there's just more value in the relationship now because we're past that. So it was, yeah. Well, and I think that is a certain, uh, that is a valuable lesson that you're uh, sharing with people is that, you know, having a plan, making it through and knowing the second time will be better and the third mm -hmm. time will be better than that. Mm -hmm. I want to yeah. transition, you know, to your 90 days because... Most people like there's there's something that happens, right? And for me, it was maybe at day 75, like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want this, you know. But for you at nine, you're like, uh, still wondering what's what's in it for me. And I think, where are you today, by the way? Where yeah, you that's that's what you didn't ask me before. Ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I am still not. I'm not signing off on the lifelong commitment to anything. I just don't. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, I, it's really clear to me. So, so a couple of things. A few things have happened over the past few weeks, right? One is, you, I'm with you. I believe there's a switch that happens for people, and it. It happened. It tends to happen in the 90 days. And for me, the switch has just gone much slower. It's gone outside of the 90 days, but the switch is definitely coming. And what's happening now for me that I find really interesting. I was just talking to somebody about this. It's, it's almost an irrelevant question of should I drink? Will I drink? Will I not? It just doesn't have any, it's like, well, it's, well, I have mayonnaise today. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And why are we even talking about this? It's yeah. like, it's, it just doesn't feel like it needs to occupy the bandwidth. Um, so, um, yeah. Definitely. And I do, I do feel um, that this is how we're taught um, in, in Project 90 it is the best way to think um, in terms of, Hey, here's what's going on for me today. 
pretty darn cool. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, what, when I reach for that, you know, is it going to offer me something I don't have today? I don't know about the future. I think that it's too hard to think about the future. So we try yeah. and do it in three months at a time. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's that, exactly. And that's where I am exactly right now is thinking about it three months at a time. And it's super helpful. I also think there's something about when one's mind starts to move towards that I'm going towards something as opposed to moving away from something that that's a big deal for me. Right. So it's almost like, um, yes, I'm 137 days alcohol free, but I'm day one of the rest of my, you know, not to get too Pollyannish about it, but I'm kind of in day one of this next thing that I'm really looking forward to because I'm not drinking. So instead of like, you know, I, I'm, I'm celebrating the fact that I'm avoiding drinking. It's no, I'm, I'm kind of celebrating the fact that there's something else that's coming that I'm moving towards. I'm being compelled towards as opposed to moving away from. Does that make sense? Totally. As a matter of fact, from an enrollment coach's point of view, sometimes it's the hardest thing to explain to people. Yeah. Is when you take off the ball and chain that I call it, there's this or in this existence yes, about yeah, you yeah. that people want to be around you. Like, yeah. oh, you're cool. <laughs> like, I wasn't cool before. Yeah. <laughs> I may not be cool now, but uh, you know, like, you were and you are and you always will. <laughs> um, no, but there's this sense of calm and joy that's uninhibited, whereas those saboteurs that you're talking about yes, exactly. come in yeah. Yeah. really hard. And when you kind of clear the path of that ball and chain and that internal conversation, you're like, oh, what other part? Yeah. Of, what other part of the world can I visit? That's exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and I don't think either of us would want to put the brakes on that, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Because there's some exactly. There's there's a whole new thing out there that's that's calling to me. But it is, but it is that flip from staying away from something which can occupy a good portion of energy, and instead looking forward to something and kind of and knowing it's there, knowing it's there. Maybe I don't know exactly what it is, but it's getting clearer and clearer. So um, there's also some really interesting, I think, kind of brain psychology around some of this stuff too. That th there's something called mir mirror neurons in our in our brain. And there are the, the neurons that um, that reflect. So when you're so if you're if you're if you're exuding calmness and grace and thoughtfulness and all that, it will my mirror neurons will pick up on that and I want to do the same thing. I want to behave the same way. So likewise, so they say, you know, in my language, like your saboteurs will ignite my saboteurs. So if you're Hyper vigilant. Yeah. Right, exactly. It'll ignite mine and we'll go into this vicious circle and this community of complaint and it'll all be good. And likewise, the opposite is also true. So when I'm closer to my my sage, my my inner, deeper, wiser part of myself that I really had a hard time accessing, really hard time accessing when I was drinking, a lot easier now, that that will your mirror neurons and yourself will reflect the same thing and will it will become a virtuous cycle as opposed to a destructive cycle. I so, need to look that up because that's the scientific way of explaining what I'm trying to tell people. Like, <laughs> no, I swear there's something that happens. Jobs become easier. People see, yeah, you yeah. know, you can kind of wipe away the negativity that's coming from another yeah. human being and not always taking responsibility for it. You there know? you go. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I like to think for me, I'm a, um, you know, as you said, I'm an executive coach and I like to think I'm a kind of a rocky road, blue sky co coach. So I'm very much, I love the idea of things like the law of attraction. And, you know, if you're familiar with that and what, you know, what I, what I put out to the universe is what I'll bring into the universe. But I'm also, I mean, there's physiology, there's neurophysiology to support a lot of that. So yeah, this, these mirror neurons are part of what it's like, oh, it's not just, you know, Northern California, woo woo kinds of kinds of it's got some it's got it's got an edge. It's got a rocky road to it, too. That has to do with our physiology. Yeah, well, I I mean, if if you talk to James and it's like, what exactly are we doing? He's using some of the latest and greatest neuroscience yeah, concepts yeah. to 
change habits, right? Right on. Yeah, love that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, one of those things, and you and I just talked a little bit about this in another forum, was that, you know, that, you know, 90 days is not just an easy number to remember. It's a great number for solidifying a new habit. So, you know, kind of the old way of thinking about habit formation was it takes 21 days. And it turns out that's not even close, that it's closer to 66 days, but even more so, you know, to really reinforce it and make sure that we we have something that we can go into autopilot around in a lot of ways, 90 days is a good, is a good mark. So that's part of, I think, what's in James's mind is he didn't make it a 60 day program. He made it a 90 day program for some good reasons. Yeah, I, I do think the pop comes later. So yeah, exactly. The pop. The those switch. people that are working on the 30-day program, yeah, 30 days and, and reflect on what's going on and commit to the next 30. To see yes, that goes and commit to the next 30. Right? Yeah. Just yeah. Because yeah. each one is progressive. That's right. And there are different tools. I mean, it's not only learning the tools at the beginning, but you know, you need some time to be able to apply them to work. It's like being trained in a kitchen and saying, okay, here's your knife and your fork and your blender and your bowl. Now go make a souffle. And it's like, well, what? what? <laughs> you can't just give me the tools. The tools are great, and I can, but I need some time and you know to be able to master and apply and, and put some um, sophistication around you. So, yeah. Oh, Danny, our, we just loved having you in this program. You're just uh, a, a delight to listen to with all the science and application <laughs> and everything else that that yeah. is uh, kind of going through your brain and, and then you take the time to teach us. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Um, I want to I wanna kind of close out. I, I was going to ask you about like, well, what's the one thing that you learned, but we talked about so many things. So. Yeah. Why yeah. is why why do you believe that um, community? I guess we can talk about community because we know why why was the community so important to you during this process? Well, I'm realizing now, actually, through some additional kinds of research stuff that I've been doing that there's good good habit formation often depends on community at some level. So that's, you can't do it on your own. You can't, well, no, no, let's say, you know, there's a small, you know, I think about people who are quit drinking on a bell curve, right? And there's a small fraction at the end that can do it all on their own. But the majority of folks are in the middle where you need a few things. Um, one is a plan, two are the tools, three is support. And four is community, whether it's, so that's, that's, and, and now, and I'm realizing that as I, again, on this latest bit of research I've done that most good habit formation is really dependent on a community, right? It's easy to rise and fall with a community. So, um, so I, you know, I so value that we have that and, you know, from all over the world and different, sorry, my dog. That's okay. Um, that community is, is an essential piece of the, the new habit formation that needs to happen. So yeah. um, again, it's all part of, you know, the whole system's thinking and how different things support, but this community is really cool, right? This community is from all over the world. Right. It's really crazy, right? And I've just not, I've never interacted with so many people around something so personal and private um, from around the world, around the world. So different perspectives, different ways of looking at things. And it's it's pretty cool. It's actually very yeah, cool. It is cool. Well, Danny, I got to let you get back to your job. I could talk to you all day long. Uh, that was fun. I, that. I really appreciate the time you gave us and all the insight that you shared about your journey. And it's just been uh, a privilege to watch you grow and teach us as you grow so thank you so much thank you Rosanna. it was a real pleasure i really enjoyed this thanks so much thanks for listening to the alcohol free lifestyle podcast i want to load you up with some free stuff right now so if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide i will send you my quit alcohol guide which has helped six figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking you can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. 
If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word PROJECT90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word PROJECT90, that's one word, PROJECT90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.